I will say again what I have said before and what I put on Facebook this weekend. I would rather get a root canal without anesthesia from a morbidly obese blind woman with a speech impediment than go through Trump versus Biden 2.0. To the extent that you are excited by the presidential election and the candidates, you should understand that you are actually well in the minority. You may be very excited. A majority of Americans are not. And a lot of people will take the grin and bear it approach of, well, we got to beat Joe Biden, so we'll suck it up and do what we have to do. And that makes a ton of sense because we got to get rid of Joe Biden. The Democrats are in total freakout mode right now about uh, where this is headed, what it's looking like, who's in charge, how are we going to replace Biden? I mean, CNN is priming the pumps. Uh, uh, Their inside politics show yesterday spent the bulk of the show discussing what can be done to get rid of uh, Joe Biden because it's so bad. Ezra Klein is a uh, progressive prognosticator and pundit and columnist. He's now leading the effort saying something's got to be done. We got to stop Joe Biden. They're attacking Nate Silver. Nate Silver has a piece he put up yesterday. It's time for the White House to put up or shut up. Shielding Biden from public appearances may be a rational strategy, and that's why it's a bad sign. And the left is pouncing on Nate Silver. It's not good for the president. And then, of course, you've got Joe Manchin out there who is saying stuff like this. Well, uh, the audio died on me. That's fine. I'll get the audio squared away. Joe Manchin is out saying that um, the the president can't unite. He's too progressive. And in being as progressive as he is, his inability to unite the country uh, and, and be hijacked by the left is a bad sign for the future. And in that regard, he's right. It is not a good sign for the country that Joe Biden is held hostage by the Elizabeth Warren progressives he put into his White House to bring unity to the Democratic Party. Beyond that, he's just too old. This is from Nate Silver. A president's approval ratings do have some meaningful predictive power at this stage as compared with a year ago. And with the general election matchup all but locked in, Biden's head-to-head polls against Trump provide some meaningful signal too. So it's no longer safe to ignore that Biden has consistently trailed pump Trump in polls both nationally and, more importantly, in swing states. Or that Biden's approval rating is just 39% and shows no signs of improving well below the threshold that would ordinarily make a president a favorite for re-election. It's become even clearer that Biden's age is an enormous problem for him. As many as 86% of Americans say he's too old in one poll, though numbers in the 70 to 75% range are more common, still an overwhelming majority in a bitterly divided country. In the past couple of weeks, a special counsel report characterized Biden as a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. In response, Biden conducted an impromptu press conference in which, defending himself against allegations of memory loss, he confused the names of the leaders of Egypt and Mexico and was defiant with reporters in a way that, yes, this latter part is subjective. I doubt many impartial observers would say came across well. He declined to do a Super Bowl interview that may have allayed public concern, something Barack Obama did all eight years in office and Trump did three times and Biden did in 2021. There is no plan by the White House to fix this issue. So what Nate Silver's proposal is, is Biden can weed out the bad interviewers from the favorable interviewers, the people who will give him softball interviews, and he should do as many of these interviews as he can with as favorable a host as possible, do them as much as possible in the next couple months, and if things don't change, well, he's got time to drop out, release his delegates, and the Democrats can find a new nominee because, of course, for the Democrats, it's all about we got to stop Trump. And what Nate Silver has the audacity to say to Democrats is that Joe Biden does not have what it takes to stop Donald Trump. I've been telling you guys for a very long time now 
that Democrats are nuts if they think Joe Biden can't be beat. They're nuts if they think Donald Trump won't get reelected president. Democrats have convinced themselves that there's no possible way that normal Americans would vote for Donald Trump, and they hold their hat to a polling that shows like 53% of Americans will never vote for Donald Trump. But there's a problem with that. That's registered voters, and not all registered voters vote. When you actually look at people who are likely to vote, a lot of them are willing to vote for Donald Trump. And in fact, the views of his administration among likely voters are improving in polling. People are starting to think, you know what, actually, it wasn't as bad as this, and maybe I could deal with just four more years of it. He would be term limited after all. The fact that voters, and you can see it in polling, are beginning to rationalize that is a very big indicator of a problem for the Democrats. When voters are right now beginning to rationalize, you know what, actually, it wasn't that bad. I think I could deal with four more years of it. Democrats have a real problem and that they have no plan to change it is part of the problem. And so here's what the Democrats have hit upon. It is the same thing Republicans often hit upon. It's the thing that if you're on social media, you get a lot of. As you all know, I criticize everybody. I'm a pretty equal opportunity criticizer. Not a fan of Trump, not a fan of Biden. I would prefer Trump in the White House than Biden, but I'm willing to criticize Trump. And the Trump supporters out there scream and rail at me that you're just never Trump, you're anti-Trump, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter what nice things I say the moment I criticize him. Well, you were always never Trump. We knew it. Doesn't matter how often I criticize Biden. Uh, the Republicans are like, well, you're going to vote for him, aren't you? Hell no, I'm not voting for Joe Biden. But your tribe bullies you into submission and silence. It's what the Democrats are doing with people like Ezra Klein and particularly Nate Silver and others who are daring to raise flags about Joe Biden in the same way as what Republicans do to me and others who raise red flags about Donald Trump. But when we point out there are weaknesses they need to overcome, they want to silence you so that you do not point them out. It's like uh, killing the kid who cried the emperor has no clothes. You're seeing it elevated with Democrats now more so than Republicans. In fact, if anything, it shows the Republicans are a little more comfortable with Trump right now than the Democrats are with Biden because there is not as sustained an attack on Republicans who raise criticisms of Trump as there are on Democrats who raise criticisms on Biden. The Democrats know they have a problem. And to Nate Silver's point, if Joe Biden can't go out and do a series of interviews with softball interviewers and do damage control and show he can get out there, well, it's probably time for him to step aside. Biden says he's going to relaunch his campaign. Uh, it's going to be a reboot at the State of the Union. He's going to use the State of the Union to reboot his reset moment, Mike Allen and Alex Thompson call it at Axios. Biden officials see next month's State of the Union address as a big public reset moment, a chance to overcome or at least neutralize concerns about Biden's age and vitality. Many top Democrats are convinced if the election were today, Biden would lose to Trump. His address on March 7th is his biggest chance to shift public perceptions. But there's a problem with this, and you all know what it is. Joe Biden. Joe Biden did a press conference to allay people's concerns about the special prosecutor's report and wound up confusing Mexico and Egypt and missing the, the details of the rosary he got after his son's death. He screwed it all up. He can't help himself unless he stays on teleprompter. By the way, uh, one bold move Biden has considered is an executive order that would dramatically staunch the record flow of migrants through the Southwest. That could even happen in the two weeks before the address, allowing Biden to say he took actions while Republicans just talk. Here's the problem. If Joe Biden issues an executive order that stops the flow of migrants, illegal aliens across the border, it's an admission against interest he could have done it all along and instead chose to allow the issue to fester and use it for political gain when the situation became untenable for Democrats, not Americans as a whole. 
Joe Biden would have put Democratic Party policy and preferences ahead of the American people by issuing an executive order now that he could have issued all along. The fact that the Biden administration is considering it shows how desperate they are to now contain a mess they themselves created, and every single Republican will be committing political malpractice if they don't forcefully acknowledge that Joe Biden could have done this the whole time. Why did he wait for the situation to fester as much as he did? Release the transcript of the special prosecutor's investigation and note how Biden just did something he could have done all along. It's political malpractice for Democrats to be saying this. I got to just just recognize here, out of the gate here as we start the show, the level of political malpractice and incompetence coming from Team Biden means Barack Obama was right. Barack Obama discouraged Joe Biden from running in 2016 because he didn't think he had what it took to run and better to go with Hillary Clinton, who lost. And now he's telling Joe Biden you need to shake up your team because they're not ready. Every single thing shows Barack Obama has been right about Joe Biden the whole time. As he said, never underestimate Joe Biden's ability to F things up. Joe Biden is about to screw up the Democrats' chances of winning in November, and Barack Obama seems to know it.